Hey everyone, it's time for a live look at the astrology. My name is Katie Sweetman and this is your look at the astrology for goodness. Um, what day is it? It's August 28th through September 3rd, 2023. So yeah, I'm I'm on the road of visiting my dad and I'm, not, I'm at a family beach house. Um, so I'm kind of sort of in the corner today and honestly I don't know about the uh, the quality of the stream but we're just gonna see what happens but thank you all for joining me at the very least um, I'm just gonna continue recording I don't know if this is um, let's continue recording so this is a live look at the astrology for August 28th through September 3rd 2023 I was just saying I think before the stream cut out that uh, I am visiting my dad. So I'm on the road. Uh, so I have a little bit of a different background. And um, I'm not 100% sure about the quality of the internet connection. So we are just going to see how this goes. Um, hey, Mercury retrograde. Here we go. But um, yeah, for those that don't know who I am, my name is Katie Sweetman, and I'm an astrologer and psychic medium located in the New York City area. And every week we gather live to look at the astrology, and you hear me say it every week, the, the astrology is 50%, you are the other 50%. So we've got some big astrology this week, we will talk about it, and what do we do with it? How, does, how do we show up? for these bigger changes and transformations. But if you happen to actually be catching the live stream, I hope it's working. Say hello. Let me know it's working. Where are you watching from? Normally I'm in the New York City area, but I'm in Delaware. I actually have a family connection to Delaware, and, and maybe you all don't know this, but I'm, I'm originally from the Washington, D.C. area, and I, and I grew up spending my summers uh, going to Delaware. That's kind of, you know, something that people did around there. But uh, yeah, I'm getting a chance to visit visit my dad. Um, and just a little update, because I know some of you, you know, pay attention, you watch my show, you know, he has been sick. He got uh, very sick last year with pancreatic cancer. Still here by the grace of God. So yeah, I'm just uh, spending time with him while I can. So let's just uh, let's jump into the astrology this week. We, so let's recap. So as we ended last week, I think I, I can't remember what I said last week, I think it was jet lagged, um, that Mars was going into Libra. And that was a big thing to watch because over the next six weeks, Mars is sort of in advance of the solar eclipse on October 14th, there's gonna be a solar eclipse in Libra. In advance, Mars is activating the eclipse energy, which means our September and our October are going to be very interesting months. If you are a Libra, if you are an Aries, if you are even a Capricorn and Cancer, life is getting a little bit interesting at the moment. And this is just what happens every nine years, the, the nodes go into your sign, which they did for Aries and Libra back, uh, gosh, I think it was uh, July 22nd. And so it means the eclipses are in particular affecting Aries and Libra. We have that Libra solar eclipse on October 14th and that by what's called a square is affecting my Capricorns and my Cancers or for those who have strong placements in those signs or even what are called angles in those signs. So when we start to get closer to the eclipses, and that's the funny thing about eclipses, that sometimes they can manifest a month before. I've seen them manifest three months before. It really depends on what the planet is activating and sometimes it's the event happens before. So we may be seeing the eclipse, and this eclipse really touches on themes about relationship, connection, uh, socialization, interaction, negotiation, choosing peace, or maybe having, because the North Node's in Aries, having to stand up for yourself, having to advocate for your needs, your wants, your desires. And that's sometimes with Libra, we capitulate our wants and our needs and our desires. So Mars went into Libra on the 27th of August. And then today, the 28th of August, Uranus is now retrograde. And I actually mentioned this in my update for this week for, uh, for Monday. Over the last six years, Uranus has turned retrograde in August. Before that, and I'm sure it was about six or seven years before that, it was in July. It's starting to sense a little pattern. Starting next year, Uranus is going to go and you know, turn, do its retrograde starting in September. 
But what I wanted to point out is that we've actually had about six Auguses that had a lot of really intense energy because Uranus turned retrograde. A retrograde just means the planet now, uh, you know, instead of appearing to turn direct, now turns retrograde, meaning it's going backwards in the sky. The planet, of course, does not go backwards. It's an illusion, but from an energetic standpoint, um, it's time to pull in. It's time to be receptive. It's the yin phase, it's not the yang phase. Uranus works a little bit differently than, let's say, Mercury. Mercury is retrograde right now. Venus is retrograde right now, although not for much longer. Uranus is an evolutionary planet. Its job is to get us to grow and evolve by any means possible. And so this energy over the last uh, five years, I know I know I said six years, but it's been in Taurus for the last five years. This energy has centered on Taurus. Now, Taurus is the first Earth sign. It is a fixed sign. And by its nature, Earth energy through Taurus doesn't want change. And it's one of the reasons why symbolically the last five years, things have been changing. Things have been shaking up. Taurus is a sign of money, income, material stability, material security, feeling like we're safe and sound and secure. So Uranus is now retrograde. And it doesn't mean that Uranus stops being Uranus, but it concentrates its energy in August least for now. And so this week, whatever we are experiencing in theory on paper is trying to wake us up. It's trying to get us to do things differently, trying to get us to reevaluate maybe the things that we used to think were important aren't really important. Uranus tries to get us out of our own way by any means possible. Sometimes that means things change, things end. And this is all so that we can get closer to our authentic self. Think about Uranus. It's about radical authenticity. There is no sentimentality with Uranus and it will quickly bring us in alignment with something, which may means that we've really left something behind, like I said, swiftly. So what's going on for you? Question mark, question mark. How did you, and this is the thing, we had Uranus very well integrated into the energies of the August 16th Leo new moon. So that week leading up to, you know, before the ecl uh, eclipse, I said, before the new moon on the 16th of August, so that first week of August, that second week of August, maybe things were really shifting and moving for you. So here we are. Now it's uh, Uranus is retrograde and it's another unfolding of this energy, but that's the thing. And you've heard me talk about this before. Uranus has been in Taurus since May of 2018 and March of 2019. So whatever's happening this week, whatever has been happening in August has its roots, has its seeds four or five years ago, 2018, 2019. For some of you, that was a very dramatic time, especially my Tauruses, my Leos, my Scorpios, and my Aquariuses. For some of you, you scratch your head like, I don't know, I don't know what. It's possible that it's quiet. It's possible that it's internal. It's possible that you haven't quite joined the dots together. So that's another big thing that's happening this week. And then when we go through each of the 12 zodiac signs, you know, where is this energy really concentrating? It's, you know, I would have talked about this a couple weeks ago with the uh, Leo new moon, but we will revisit it. Um, we did have the sun hit, uh, reach an opposition to Saturn yesterday, and Saturn is actually a big player in the astrology this week because we are having a Pisces full moon on August 30th. So this is the counter. The full moon is always the counter to the new moon. That new moon is on August 16th. Something with the new, like the new moon plants a seed. It's the start of something. It's a new chapter. It's a new container of energy for us to live through, a new lens for us to live through, depending on the zodiac sign that the new moon is in, to, depending on the aspects that the new moon is making. And then here we get, you know, two weeks later, the Pisces full moon or a, or a full moon in general really activates the energies and brings something to be revealed or to shown to us. Or sometimes the full moon gets us to make a decision, um, Sometimes we have to, we're very reactive with the full moon. That's life is typically not quiet around the full moon. Full moons make things happen. 
But this full moon, it makes, uh, it's, it's kind of wide, but the full moon's in Pisces and Saturn is also in Pisces. So Saturn energy, a little bit different than Uranus. Uh, Uranus is, a, is revolutions and awakenings. Saturn, duties and responsibilities. Uh, maintaining the status quo, building towards the future, showing up on time, holding yourself accountable, um, doing the right thing, maturity, responsibility, if I didn't say responsibility already. So Saturn is also in the mix this week. So it's a full moon when we, where we have to honor Saturn. What are the choices that we're making? How are we working towards our future? That's the thing about Saturn, especially a full moon that puts a spotlight on Saturn, is that we see things in black and white. It's kind of the irony about Saturn and Pisces is that Pisces is not a black and white sign. It's every color of the rainbow. It's every spectrum of light that we can't even see with our visible eyes. Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. It takes us outside of our physical reality. Here we have Saturn and, and Pisces into the beginning of 2026. And so ironically, this is a time when we're building Saturn, we are constructing, uh, you know, taking on duties and responsibilities, learning lessons, showing up on time and a sign that is non time outside this physical world. And I and, and it's a really interesting energy. And, and I'm saying this as an astrologer, noticing how Saturn moved through Capricorn 2018 to 2020 through Aquarius 2020 to the very beginning of 2023 very different energy now that it's in Pisces. And I think the lessons that we are learning are very subtle. The lessons are internal, spiritual, existential. Whether we realize it or not, we're all searching for deeper meaning, deeper truths, deeper meaning into the beginning of 2026. For some of us, the lessons are about finding peace, learning to let go, shed the past, shed the baggage, Pisces is a sign where it's the two fishes, the things we take with us to the other side, the things that we don't take with us, they stay here after the end of our lives. And of course, you know, we're still here. We're not, we're not going anywhere over the next few years, hopefully. Um, and, you know, there's a little bit of a psychic, emotional and spiritual inventory that's happening right now. So this is the week that, like I said, ironically puts things into black and white but it's also Pisces. And I think that we're trying to figure out what the balance is between the things that we have to do, our human lives, the bills we have to pay, the, the places we have to go, the schedules and the duties and responsibilities that we have. But then there's the other side of it. It has to, to feed our hearts, it has to feed our souls. So there's a little bit of this, this deeper existential material that's in this Pisces full moon. This Pisces full moon is at seven degrees of Pisces. And that was actually the degree that Saturn turned retrograde back in June. I think it was like June 17th. Um, so Saturn is in the mix. And then the energy of the full moon through Jupiter, Jupiter is what's called the ruling planet of the full moon, points us back over to Taurus. So Taurus is very much about our physical lives. It's, it's a material sign. Pisces is a non-material sign. So there's a kind of a push and pull and friction that's happening this week between our material lives and our non-material lives, our physical duties and responsibilities, Virgo season, Taurus, uh, the, uh, Jupiter and Taurus, Uranus and Taurus, Uranus turns retrograde, but also what's in our heart and what's in our soul. So everybody's going to feel this differently. Pisces is a very subjective sign um, and whatever we are feeling around this full moon connects to a bigger story kind of like Uranus, uh, Uranus turning retrograde, except uh, Uranus is going to be in, in, in Taurus for seven years. Saturn's only going to be in Pisces for three. This brings us back to Saturn's arrival in Pisces in March of 2023. So we have these milestone points where Saturn, you know, we, we really start to see what the Saturn is all about, Saturn and Pisces whether it's Saturn going to Pisces back on March 7th, whether it's Saturn turning retrograde on June 17th, whether it's Sun opposite Saturn just uh, yesterday, the 27th, whether it's the Pisces full moon, August 30th. And there will be other times, whether it's Capricorn season, Aquarius season, or even a Pisces new moon next year. So we're building a story with Saturn. So pay attention to what that story is. And Pisces, sometimes it's very emotional. Maybe we're going to feel very emotional. 
this week, we're all going to feel it differently. The other big thing that's happening this week, although I probably will return to this next week when we have a little bit more time to talk about it, is Venus is turning uh, direct. So if you may recall, Venus has been retrograde since July 22nd, and Venus in total turns retrograde for 40 days, a very symbolic amount of time. And as you heard me say in the introduction, retrogrades are about a time of pulling in, reflecting, checking our intuition. Retrogrades are a yin phase of energy. They're not yang, they pull in, again, they receive, they don't push out. It's not about action with the retrograde. And there's an element of the past in any retrograde. And so with Venus uh, turning retrograde back in July, we had to go back to Venus, uh, previous Venus retrograde cycle. It could be Venus retrograde in Leo in, in um, July, August of uh, 2015. It could be um, Venus uh, as a planet of relationships going back to old relationships and even venus is the planet of value and worth material stability material security there might be a theme about our material lives and value and worth and even self-worth that has been present over the last uh, gosh uh, you know past 40 days venus retrograde in leo and i and i said this at one of the previous times is that venus retrograde in leo maybe we have to reevaluate how we invest and Leo, and maybe you're scratching your head and like, I'm not a Leo, like I don't I don't even like Leos, but you are each of the 12 zodiac signs. You have Leo someplace in your astrology, and Leo is also an archetype. It's the archetype of the sun, of creation, of the light that shines. Of course, maybe you're not a Leo, but it's an energy that is available for all of us. You have a, you have the sun. The sun is the ruler of Leo. You have the sun in some sign of the zodiac. I'm the sun in, in Scorpio, for example. So the energy of Leo in my astrology pulls over to Scorpio. It shines the light through the sign of Scorpio. So what is your relationship with the sun? What is your relationship with really investing in the things that light you up, give you joy, give you passion? And this Venus uh, retrograde in Leo has been a reevaluation of your relationship with that. And maybe you realize, hey, I actually don't value myself, or I don't invest in the things that actually light me up and give me passion and give me joy. And maybe I now that Venus is trying to direct you to do things differently. Or maybe it's a look back at old relationship patterns, for example. When we go through the the, the each of the 12 signs, like those are actually the big aspects for this week. You know, when you look at when I was looking at the ephemeris for this week, there's it's pretty much the moon. There's no real aspects that are happening. It's just Venus turning direct, Uranus turning retrograde, and the Pisces full moon. But these three things do give us a lot to, to navigate and to negotiate over the coming days and weeks on top of Mars being now in Libra. So Mars is really activating this bigger story about relationships, connections, socialization, um, negotiation, if I didn't say that word already. So a lot of big moving pieces this week. Um, and so when we see moving pieces in the astrology, it means the story, whatever story we're going through is starting to change, for example. So we're just going to jump right into the, uh, the you know, gosh, I can't, can't speak English, um, <laughs> looking at the 12 zodiac signs because we have like an absence of uh, aspects this week. It just means that the moon is really doing the talking for us this week, the full moon or the moon, you know, going into Aries later this week or the moon in Aquarius uh, at the start of the week. So let's just jump in and go into Aries. So Aries, so let's start with Uranus retrograde. We've talked about this over the years. So this is just your refresh. Uranus is in your second sign of money and income, material stability, material security. Every Aries is going to live this time differently depending on your relationship with money, income, material stability, and material security. Maybe that part of your life has a past. Maybe it's how you were raised. Maybe it's the stuff you inherited from mom and dad. Maybe it's stuff that you can't even put your finger on. 
Uranus has been five years of shifting, changing, and awakening to a very different reality about money, income, material stability, and material security. Like I said, every every Aries is going to live this time differently. So when you start to uh, retrace your steps, what's what do you start to see in this part of your life, especially the previous six Augusts or even at different periods, it could be Taurus season, the eclipses that we just had the past couple of years, it could be Scorpio season, for example. Uh, Uranus turning direct, that, that's been in January over the past few years, um, and how these times, these time periods, have really tried to shift and to change and to awaken a very different story about money and income. Then there's Mars, and Mars is your planet. Aries. Mars goes into Libra and it will be in Libra, I think, until the 12th of October. Libra is your relationship sign. So you've got six weeks where it's about other people. Um, you need to learn to negotiate and to compromise and interact with people. You also feel motivated, inspired to really connect and interact with people. If you are in a relationship, particularly what I call capital R relationships, these are your marriage, these are your partnerships, these are your, the people that you live with, Mars typically heats things up. So if there's a, an issue on the back burner between you and a partner, um, here comes Mars. All of this is in advance of the Libra solar eclipse of October 14th, and that solar eclipse is going to really activate the part of your chart that talks about relationship. This runs the gamut. This runs the gamut from a, an Aries starting relationship or starting a new phase in a relationship with their partner. This could mean two people having to figure something out. Something's not working anymore. Maybe it's the end of a relationship. It's hard to say, but it's really focused on other people. I'm kind of going to get a little bit ahead of myself for a second. You know, Mars will go into Scorpio right before the eclipses. So the energy also will bring in Scorpio as you get into the uh, October eclipses. Scorpio is about trust, vulnerability, uh, intimacy, uh, being able to really open up on a deeper level to somebody, including a partner. Then there's Venus retrograde. Speaking of relationships, Venus has been retrograde for you and your fifth sign, passion, play, creativity, really knowing who you are, identity. And whatever thing that's been happening around relationship, maybe underneath, there's a question of identity. Do you get to be who you are in a relationship? Does your partner or, or whomever, any, any sort of you know, major relationship, allow you space? To be yourself. Maybe this is the time where you need to really get your relationships all, you know, capital R, small r, relationships really in alignment with your needs, your wants, your desires, the things that let you up and give you passion. But this is going to be a very uh, interesting next five, six, seven weeks for Aries. Taurus. Taurus. So Venus, your planet is just about to come to the end of its retrograde. And it's been spending uh, the retrograde period in your fourth. So this has been a time to go back to themes around family, home, past, memory, mom and dad, um, or even that sort of internal state of home and, and getting your needs met, for example. The retrograde means that you've had to go back to something from the past reevaluate something, um, about reconnect in some way. And now with Venus turning direct, you know, how, how does the story change? How do you see things differently? How do you now take action or, or, or make a change based on the things that you realize over the last 40 days? The thing is, is that Venus is doing this sort of dance with Uranus throughout its retrograde period. We got one more square with Uranus, as I think it's as we go into the end of September. So this is a time where there it's like Uranus, let me say it differently, Taurus, Taurus, uh, Uranus has been in your sign since 2018, 2019, and it's very likely that you've changed. So if you have changed, how does your home change? How does your family change? How, how do you, how does sort of the emotional and psychic furniture of your life rearrange to fit the changes that you've made. Mars, which is a relationship plant for you, it is going into your six. So 
over the next uh, six weeks. This is a time where your relationships need attention, they need work, they need to look at power structure, power dynamics, or maybe for some of you, your partner or other people need you, like you need to be of service to other people, or maybe even looking at your relationship with service. And sometimes there's an inequity, you do things for other people. Is it balanced? Not that it has to be transactional, but like how does it be become like a natural give and take between you and other people? And then um, Pisces full moon. So that Pisces full moon is putting the spotlight on your 11th sign, friends, community, society, humanity. It's a full moon that's really trying to get you to look outside yourself, look towards the future, get more in alignment and about the things that are important to you. And uh, it's a full moon that's really, especially with the conjunction of the Saturn, getting very clear about who your friends are and who your friends are not. Gemini. Gemini. So your planet is Mercury and Mercury is currently retrograde. No big deal. This is your time every quarter about um, to pull back, to reflect, to integrate. That's the thing. As a Gemini, you just keep like, you know, taking in information, taking in ideas, uh, trying everything, doing everything. There has to be a process to allow you to integrate, to reflect, to go within. Mercury is presently retrograde in something called your fourth sign. So the, the focus is on home and family throughout this retrograde, especially it's also Virgo season. The sun has reached the very bottom of your personal astrology charts. And with Mercury retrograde, it may mean you have to go back to something from the past, something about mom and dad, something about family, something about um, needing to work on something. You know, Virgo is a sign of you put uh, projects and health and wellness and you know releasing cleaning up and letting things go that said you do have a pisces full moon in your chart and pisces for you is your career sign so that's the very top of your chart so this is a very prominent full moon for you uh gemini and it may mean that the, this full moon really puts in the spotlight something about career whether it's career whether it's your professional life, uh, I see that you said it's glitching, but hopefully it's still recording. Um, whether it's about career, whether it's about your personal, your professional life, whether it's about the duties and responsibilities that you carry in the world. So this might be an important week for you, Gemini, and especially because that full moon does play opposite Mercury, which is uh, your, your planets. And how do you find the balance between home, your home life, your internal life, and your professional life, uh, your needs, your wants versus the needs and wants and duties of the world, for example. Uranus is also turning retrograde. It's turning retrograde in your 12th sign. And that 12th sign is about your relationship with your spirituality, truth and meaning, not truth and meaning because you read it in a book, truth and meaning because you discovered it within. It's been five years, Gemini, of trying to open up and awaken to something that you didn't you weren't even seen before and so this might be a week that's trying to show you something and perhaps show you something that is typically um not seen it, it could be uh, in a blind spot it could be an illusion but uranus is the great awakener for a reason um cancer cancer so what do we got we got mars and libra and for you, Cancer, Libra is your sign of home, family, past, uh, roots, foundation, mom and dad. And so Mars being in this part of your chart says that family um, need attention right now. Home needs attention. Mars is not a, not a quiet planet and maybe your home life isn't quiet over the next six weeks. For some Cancers or Cancer Risings, it's a move. It's a relocation. Um, it's, a, it's a need to take that energy of Mars, motivation, power, desire, and to make sure that your home really aligns with your, your desires, your wants. But like I said, it's not a quiet time and all of this is in advance. Um, I'm gonna just continue the recording because it's not recording two, di oh, I think it's <laughs> recording two different videos. Um, yeah, this is what you get for trying to uh, use internet someplace else. But 
I will have to put these two videos together, especially when I put them onto, onto YouTube, but I was in the middle of cancer and then the, the, the feed cut out. So um, I'm gonna have an editing project tonight. So anyway, um, cancer, what I was just talking about, uh, Oh, Mars is in your fourth sign of home and family, and this part of your 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 chart is really going to see a lot of um, change and transformation in advance of the eclipses. You're going to have a solar eclipse in this part of your chart on October 14th. Solar eclipses is in the fourth or classic four. Somebody moves in, somebody moves out, birth of a child, move, or some major milestone around home and family. You'll have to get back to me, for example. Leo, uh, Leo. So this uh, this is actually some big astrology for you this week. Namely, it's Uranus turning retrograde. We've talked about this uh, month in, month out, year in, year out because we are now five years into a seven year story. Yes, seven years about you, Leo. Yes, Leo, reinventing your professional life, and every Leo is going to live this time a bit differently. Um, for some Leos, uh, this is about a 180 in your professional life. Maybe you can look back over the last five years and there has been a 180 in your professional life. Um, maybe for some Leos, it's about a breakthrough in your professional life. No, you can't play it small anymore. See what is the story that is happening around your professional life, duties and responsibilities, the direction that you're taking your life in. As Uranus turns retrograde this week, all of this is playing off of that uh, new moon in um, Leo that we had uh, back on August 14th, no, August 16th. So this is already a birthday month for you. I realized that we are you know, we're now in Virgo, but uh, you know that new moon came very late in your birthday season, and it sort of carries the birthday energies into the beginning of September. And so this is a extended birthday season that's really highlighting this need to reinvent yourself. If your birthday was the 16th, the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, it's going to be a very big year for you. And maybe this full moon that we have on, um, goodness, um, on the 30th really puts that change and transformation into the spotlight. But that said, you know, Uranus is turning retrograde. Venus, you, uh, which rules your career, uh, is also turning direct. It's turning direct in Leo. Hey, you are a Leo. So this is maybe all, <clears throat> all these like ideas and, and maybe the, the things that you wanted to change. Now it's time to actually take action and move forward on those things. Um, the other thing is the Pisces full moon. And so for you, Leo, Pisces is something called your eighth sign. <clears throat> so I've, I've mentioned this before, but it's a good time to revisit it. But Leo, you are in what I call the eighth room. Being in the eighth room doesn't happen very often in our lives. Maybe it happens two, three times. And when we're in the eighth room, we have to face ourselves. We have to do the work. We need to sit down with a counselor. Maybe, maybe need is a strong word. You, you have to make the decisions that are right for you. Um, because It's my belief they're not meant to do the eighth room alone. But there's this process that's been happening since March, whether it's obvious or not, where it's trying to bring you deeper into yourself. In order to go more deeply into yourself, you have to face your fears. You have to see what's underneath all the things, looking at desire, motivation, um, uh, the things, uh, the intimacy, vulnerability, for example. And I'm saying this because the full moon activates that Saturn story, for example. With the energy of that full moon pointing towards your career, there is something that might shift either the direction that you take your professional life in, the sort of the, you know, sort of the duties and responsibilities that you carry, or maybe even like the things that you really value, you know, what's important, what's not important. For example, uh, that said, Leo, Mars has gone into to Libra, and for you, Libra is your, wait, gotta do the math, is your third sign, and it's probably going to be a busy time for you over the next uh, you know, six weeks, especially in advance of that October 14th eclipse. This is about um, voice, communication, education is a big focus for you over the next uh, 18 months. 
And uh, maybe this is a time where you're starting a manuscript or you're doing more public speaking. It's all about getting your voice out there and maybe even um, getting clear about your convictions. What do you stand for and what do you think is true? Um, uh, da, 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 da. After Leo's <laughs> Virgo. Virgo, happy birthday, Virgo. So if your birthday is around that full moon, this is a year where your life is in the spotlight. This is a full moon that's also putting in the spotlight Saturn. So for you, Virgo, Saturn is in your relationship sign. It's been in your relationship sign since the beginning of March, and it will be there until the beginning of 2026. I'm saying this because I wanted to sort of put the bigger framework into focus. Over the next three years, a few things can happen. You're really building connection, building relationships. Saturn loves relationship. You are looking at existing relationship or existing relationship patterns and maybe seeing that there is some inequity, there's some disorder. Things need to go back into a different way. Saturn loves organization. There's also a time where other people demand your your duties and responsibilities. And maybe it's a time where you're really feeling the energies of Saturn, uh, time, karma, aging, having to take the next big step up in your life, personal and even relationship milestones. It's very common when Saturn goes through the relationship sign. This is the classic time for people to get married or to get into serious partnerships. So this is a full moon that puts relationship in the spotlight and every Virgo is going to live this differently. You know, maybe you're, you're a Virgo that's planning to move in with a partner or you're a Virgo that's planning to leave a partner. Maybe you're a Virgo that's planning to say I do to somebody or maybe you're a Virgo that's looking at sort of the landscape of relationship and seeing that there's some work that needs to be done. Again, everybody will feel this a little bit differently. With the energy um, pointing towards Jupiter in your ninth, there is some bigger philo philosophical questions. And what are the philosophies that power relationship and maybe making sure that you and another person are on the same page? Do keep in mind that Mercury, your planet, is retrograde. No big deal, happens every quarter. And this is a time when you need to take a step back or go back to an old story or something from the past, something needs your attention. And maybe it is something about relationship and maybe power dynamics in the relationship. Uh, for you, Virgo, Uranus turning retrograde uh, highlights more of this story about a change in what you believe and what you stand for. Like the ninth, which is where Uranus is right now, opens up our eyes to the world. And you can open up your eyes to the world through hopping on a plane, going to another country, looking at different cultures, uh, going to college, university, uh, opening up to new philosophies, new, new beliefs. And maybe that part of your life looks very different in 2023 than it did in 2018. Mars has left your sign. It's gone into Libra. And so this is now starting to heat up a story that brings us into October about money, income, material stability, and material security. Your money signs, uh, Virgo, are really highlighted into the beginning of 2025. This means different things to different Virgos, but it's really, you know, this is also a time you need to look at your bank account, look at, you know, spending, look at organization and really getting into what's important and what's a value and what's not a value. Um, Libra. Libra, so you're gonna have a lot of stuff going on in your astrology as you get into your birthday season. And I realize we're not there yet, but Mars going into Libra yesterday, August 27th, is a preview of an eclipse to come that will be on October 14th. If, you, or if your birthday is on October 14th or plus or minus a day, it is a powerful new year. That said, and we've talked about this before, the lunar nodes are now in Libra and Aries. Aries is your relationship sign. You probably know this, but I'm gonna say it in case you don't, the lunar nodes make eclipses happen. So it means that now, you know, the past two years, they were in Taurus and Scorpio, but now they are going into Aries and Libra. Hey, you're a Libra. It is a dynamic time. And it is a time when the spotlight is on you 
It's about other people, about relationship milestones, about your life going in a different direction. It's different things for different Libras. But that new moon um, solar eclipse on the, four on the 14th is going to be a powerful one. Then there's uh, Venus and Venus is your planet and it's finally turning direct on the 3rd of September. And for you, it sort of concludes this 40 day process of you having to go within, reevaluate. Leo is your sign of the future, about your hopes and wishes and dreams. It's about a sign that gets you to look outside, not just outside of yourself, but like into the bigger frameworks, not just of your life, but the world around you. So it's been a very worldly time for you, Libra, and one where you've had to reevaluate your future, the things that you thought you wanted to align yourself with, and going forward, perhaps in a different way, especially because Venus has been dancing around a square to Uranus. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, this is a, a shift point for you, Libra, and the next uh, five, six, seven, eight weeks are going to be very interesting. Scorpio. Scorpio. So Mars is your planet and Mars just went into Libra. So Libra concludes your personal zodiac. It's like you, your zodiac starts with, with Scorpio and we go through all of the uh, 12 signs and we get to the 11th and the 11th for you is Libra. Over the next six weeks, you're behind the scenes. And um, the yeah, Scorpios are going to live this a little bit differently. It really depends on what is your relationship with what I call the 12th room. You are now in the 12th room up until October you know, 12th, so that's six weeks. And while you're in the 12th room, it's like you are divesting yourself of the past two years. Mars was last in Libra two years ago. Mars has a two-year cycle. You are divesting yourself of the things that you don't want to bring with you into this next chapter that begins when Mars goes into Scorpio. I think it's on the 12th of October. For some uh, Scorpios, this is a time when um, you feel tired, you feel like you have to rest, you can't go full speed anymore, you need to shift your priorities to recuperation or care. Um, for some Scorpios, it's about shifting your priorities to Mars, Mars priorities, shifting your priorities towards your spiritual life. The 12th room is where it's almost like a sacred space. It's the sacred space that brings us into the new life that begins when Mars goes into Scorpio on October 12th. Honor this time, meditate, retreat, reflect, recuperate, rest. If you dream, um, really look at your spiritual life because all of this is in advance of an October 12th, October 14th uh, solar eclipse in Libra. And that solar eclipse says that, you know, you're, you're in this sort of major punctuation of time that really highlights the 12th over the next six months. This brings us into uh, March, April of 2024. When the 12th is really highlighted, it's about endings. I know that that's not a word that everybody likes. And you know, maybe you're like, oh, but I'm a Scorpio. I can, I can do it. Of course you can. But this is a time when you know, endings means it's about letting things go, saying goodbye. Um, you know, for some people, it's about looking at the things that you've been attached to, it could even be an addiction, and letting that go. So it's a perfect time to release, to give something up, something that you are attached to on a material level that doesn't feed your soul. It's not a time to, to push forward, um, and it's a little bit annoying because you're ruled by Mars, but just you have to wait until the 12th of October. Then there's Uranus turning direct, and Uranus is turning direct in something called your seventh, sorry, retrograde, turning retrograde in something called your seventh sign, relationships. And this has been five years, five years of you, Scorpio, reinventing how you interact, socialize, and connect to other people. You know, every Scorpio is going to live this time differently. I've seen the Scorpios that were single for 10 years and then somebody very different comes into their life. I've seen the Scorpios where they, they've left relationships, but it's for you to really know, especially, you know, if you're later Scorpio, you're born around the 16th all the way towards the end. I think that's like the 22nd of November. The, the, the pressure is on you to really make a reformation, to make a transformation and to awaken and how that will play out, of course, in relationships. 
Then there's the Pisces full moon and Pisces for you is something called your fifth sign. There's sort of these bigger questions about who are you? Like, how do you nourish the things that make you you? The things that light you up, give you passion, give you joy. So these bigger questions about identity and with Saturn in your fifth, this is a time of you taking yourself and taking your talents seriously. Sagittarius. So Sag, um, I, I say it every week, <laughs> Jupiter is your planet and Jupiter continues to be in Taurus and it will be in Taurus until May of 2024. So you have this year where you are living the energy, you're living your life through the prism of Taurus, material stability, material security, really focusing on the physical life, putting down roots, really, uh, you know, getting settled in things. You know, Taurus is also about fertility and like, what is your relationship with fertility and I don't mean that as a as a medical question I mean you know making sure your life can regenerate it is regenerative it can like so you know this it can hold the seeds for new life and how do you bring that new life into your life Sagittarius Jupiter although we have to wait till April 2024 will make a conjunction to Uranus and so Jupiter is in the room as I like to say with Uranus and so with Uranus turning retrograde this is this another wave of a reinvention and you know Taurus for you is also what's called your sixth sign health wellness um how you take care of your body how you inhabit your body do you inhabit your body and so Uranus is trying to wake you up to something. Then again, it's been trying to do that over the last four or five years. Then there's Mars going into Libra. And for you, Sagittarius, Libra is your, gosh, I have to do the math, is your 11th sign. And so the 11th sign is about the future. You're sort of reaching the end of a two-year cycle. Uh, you've really you've sort of reached the pinnacle when um, Mars went through uh, Virgo over the past uh, five, six weeks. Now it's time to look ahead. You know, what are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your what are your wishes for the future? What do you want to align yourself with? What's on the other side? What's on the other side of the horizon for you? This is also the time that gets into these bigger sort of strokes around community, society, humanity, the groups that you are involved with, the social issues, the social causes that you rally behind. And this is what's really motivating you, you right now. This is all in advance of a uh, Pisces, not Pisces, this is all in advance of a Libra solar eclipse on October 14th, where it puts friends, community, social issues, and social causes very much in the forefront as you go into 2024. Capricorn. Capricorn, so Saturn's your planet. I know say every week, and Saturn continues to be in Pisces. And I was kind of saying this in, in the introduction, even though I think that we've got a choppy, we got different uh, segments because the feed kept cutting out. But um, you know, Saturn has been in Pisces since March seventh of twenty twenty three, and it's a very different energy than Saturn and Capricorn 2018, 2019, 2020, Saturn Aquarius twenty twenty. Through 2023, Pisces is a water sign. It's subjective, it's intuitive, it feels, it, it's not the, you know, the Saturn energy, the concrete Saturn energy that you were very, you were feeling um, over the past six years. So this is a time about spirituality, looking beyond the physical plane, looking to like what's, what's there has to be something more, maybe issues around belief, the soul, spirit, whatever you believe in. There's also a time where you're taking your voice seriously and having to really look at the choices that you make. For example, in a way you are in the spotlight this week because there is a Pisces full moon on the 30th of August and it's right not that far away from Saturn. Hey, that's your planet. So this is sort of bring to a forefront like the choices that you make, how you speak, how you communicate, how you listen, the role of education in your life having to make some serious decisions. Maybe Saturn really pushing you to take the next step up, step up in your growth and your maturity. But this is one step, one rung in a story that you are sort of climbing, building, navigating as you go into 2026. Then there's Uranus retrograde and Uranus is turning retrograde in your fifth sign. And sort of this is like you are five years into reinventing your identity. It's not that you're becoming a different person. You're just breaking away from the things that aren't you. 
they never were. For example, Capricorn is a sign that does socialization rules uh, expectations really well, and sometimes that can take you away from you. Then there's Mars and Libra, and for you, Capricorn, Libra is your uh, career sign, and so your professional life is heating up over the next uh, five, six weeks. All this is in advance of a Capricorn new moon solar eclipse that happens in your career. Um, and this is maybe see, starting to see some changes happening because the classic eclipse in the career section can mean a change in your professional life, a job promotion, a job change, um, making a complete move, for example. But life is about to get interesting. Aquarius. Aquarius, Saturn is your planet and it continues to be in Pisces where it will be until February 2026. I know we talk about this every week, for example, and Pisces is your money sign. So it's about material stability, material security. Pisces and money are typically two words that don't always go together because the money is, is the material, it's a physical plane, Pisces is the non-physical plane. It just means for you Aquarius and you always have Pisces as your money sign doesn't mean you can't earn a living, but it needs to align with a sense of mission and purpose. It needs to feed your heart. It needs to feed your soul if that's something that you believe in. So here with this full moon can, um, and really putting the spotlight on Saturn, it's bringing to a head a story that's been with you only since March of 2023. What's important? What do you invest in? How do you earn a living? How do you spend your money? What's Is there any sort of discrepancy between the things that you value materially and things that you value spiritually or the things that you value in your heart and it, maybe it's a bit of an existential time because it's like you're looking at the landscape of your material life and, and, and sort of seeing well how does this line up is this important do I, do I need this stuff for example the other thing is that Mars is going into Libra and Mars is a career planet for you and this is all in advance of Mars going into your career sign on October 12th over the next six weeks, it's about like, what do you believe in? What do you stand for? What are your convictions? What's your truth? What's your faith? And, and maybe even like focusing on education and the type of education that is going to inform or build your career, for example. Maybe with all this soul searching and looking at values and worth, it's about you know, really thinking about things on an abstract level. And then when Mars goes into uh, Scorpio on October 12th, and then you have to take some concrete uh, concrete steps. However, you know this is all in advance of a ninth, uh, what's called a ninth sign solar eclipse on October 14th. And so belief, faith, truth, meaning, philosophy, conviction, you know, the, the things that you rally behind, your sense of mission and purpose in the world, this is going to be front and center over the next uh, you know, six months and honestly into the beginning of 2026. Uh, then there's Venus retrograde. So for you, uh, this is sort of bringing to a close a chapter that's been about home and family and having to reevaluate what's what's important, home and family. Uranus just turned retrograde. Uh, your home environment probably looks very different than it did in 2018, 2019. Maybe you've made a big move. Maybe your household has changed. Maybe somebody has moved in and maybe somebody has moved out. Um, but every Aquarius has been living this differently. So whatever is happening right now, it's part of this bigger story of change and transformation. I'm going to continue recording. Change and transformation that's been with you since 2018 and 2019. I think the feed just cut out. Finally, Pisces. So Pisces, uh, you have a full moon in you. And I, and I need to really put this in context with the fact that Saturn has been in your sign since March. Saturn is a real sign, meaning real life, capital R, capital L, real life. And every Pisces is going to live this differently. I've, you know, taking the temperature read of my clients, taking the temperature read of people I see on social media, it, this this could be a week of milestones, personal milestones. It could be achievements. It could be, you know, something is coming to an end or something you have to take the next step up. That's the thing. When Saturn is in your sign, um, especially if, if it's in the rising sign, like you have like the like 
the, the responsibility is on you. The duties and responsibilities are on you. And that's sometimes the hardest with Saturn in this part of the chart is because we want to rely on other people. And it's not that we can't, but capital R, real, capital L, life means that you have to be the adult. You have to be the one that steps up. The weight of the world is on you. And maybe you're the person who has to be the, the parent or the leader, for example. For my Pisces son, um, and, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but this is a very traditional way of looking at Saturn, your sign, like, you know, watch your health and wellness, like make sure you're, you're, you're eating your vegetables, you're taking your vitamins, you're going out for a walk, because sometimes Saturn can diminish our health and wellness a little bit, a little bit, it can make us feel a little bit lower in energy, for example. Um, you know, full moon, uh, Mars going into Libra. Libra is your sign of, wait, let's do the math, um, your eighth. And so Mars going into your eighth so over the next six weeks kind of adds to the capital R, capital L real life and maybe bringing up a lot of deep emotions and having to do some inner work and having to face yourself. That's the thing. We have a major planet go through the eighth it, we, it, we have to face ourselves. It's about uh, the inner work and, and sort of the transformation work that we have to do. All of this is in advance of a um, uh, October 14th Pi uh, Libra new moon solar eclipse that's going to be in your eighth. All of this is, is, is playing off of these changes in the astrology that's really bringing up a lot of deep emotions over the next 18 months. Finally, Uranus turning retrograde. It's turning retrograde in your third sign, voice, communication, how you think and listen and learn. So you're sort of on this you know, bigger story, and it's another page turn in a bigger story about you taking, um, you know, looking at your voice differently, reinventing how you speak, listen, and communicate, and even as you think. I know I'm in the deep freeze. I learned a lesson. <laughs> I learned a lesson this week and it's gonna be really interesting because I'm doing client sessions this week while I'm visiting my dad. Um, and uh, yeah, the internet keeps coming out. So I'm just gonna leave it at that and I appreciate you all and your patience um, as with the you know, Mercury retrograde tech issues. But um, hopefully, well, I'll be back home and we won't have to deal with this next week. So anyway, thank you all. I will see you all next week. You can follow me on that line empoweringastrology.com. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. You can sign up for my newsletter. I put a newsletter out every first thing every week. And um, I will see you all next week with different and faster internet. Bye-bye.